going live i am live ladies and gentlemen welcome we have made it there's nobody currently in the stream because i have just started but if you're joining me having clicked the link after the stream tune in next time Ooh, three concurrent viewers we're doing it we got some people watching the stream welcome for now if you are watching this after the fact i appreciate you being here uh, next time you want to join in and watch on stream, I will be here. I try to stream Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at three o'clock. I think it's a pretty good time. If it's too early, let me know if I'm streaming before you're finished at work. And if your work is getting in the way of my streaming, then you should apologize. No, I'm joking. Let me know and I will make some concessions and we'll see what we can do about making this a little bit more work friendly. Let me know how the audio is if you're in the chats. Once again, I don't have headphones. I left them in Sweden on my last shoot, unfortunately, and they haven't made their way back to Oslo yet. So I am still without headphones. Not good, not a good situation to be in, but it is what it is. If you will bear with me for a few seconds, you are early. The stream shouldn't start for another eight minutes. I am going to post a link to the stream on Facebook to try to get some people interested. So let's click this link. Let's copy and let's paste over on Facebook. For now, if you want to hang out and say something in the chat, I am looking at the chat. I will respond. Let's treat this as a conversation. Let's make this two ways. Once again, I will start editing here in a few minutes. We have a few cool photos. Some really ski focused photos, only three photos today. So this will be kind of a quick one. We have this one pretty dark, but we'll see what we can do with that. We have this one, which is already a little bit edited because it takes some compositing and I wanted to get it perfect. So it was ready to go on stream. And then we have this one, which is also really dark, but we'll see what we can do with that. I think it's going to be kind of cool. I think it's going to be a fun, interesting action photo filled stream. Let me just get this posted on Facebook. Let's see who we can get to come join the stream. What should I write? Board at work time to kill. Come hang and shoot the shit. We are live and ready. I can't come up with anything to say. I'm not entirely sure what to write in this Facebook post. This is tough. Come hang and shoot the shit. Drop a line in the comments. Chat with us in the comments and support your local creative. And we'll include the camera emoji because that's key. And we'll include the party emoji because we're treating this as one big party. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, if you are in watching the stream, please drop a line in the chat. Let me know how you're doing. I can't see exactly who's in the stream. So you are just numbers to me at the moment. But I believe you are so much more. And I would prefer to know who you are. So drop a line in the chat and let's get this conversation going because I don't want to talk directly at you with no feedback for an hour. I think we can do better than that. I think we can expect a conversation. Let's click post on this Facebook post. Board at work, time to kill, come hang and shoot the shit. Chat with us in the comments and support your local creative. Good enough. Add it to story post. It is now live on Facebook. Let's hope it attracts some viewers. Okay, so we still have five more minutes before the official start of the stream. I think I will save some of the editing for then. I won't get too much into the photos. I appreciate you being here. We have an excellent connection. Let me know if that's not true. YouTube is saying my stream is very healthy. This is a good thing to hear. Things are looking pretty good. Things are looking pretty good. We have some very action focused photos to be editing together today on the stream. A lot of stuff with my friend, Mr. Anders Baca, who is a skier whom I shoot with. 
quite a bit. We have a lot of dark motifs. We're going to see what we can do about fixing that. I'm pretty excited for this one. Pretty excited. I'm going to drop a line in the chat. I'll be the first one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome one and all to the greatest stream on earth. <laughs> I think that's modest enough, right? Let me know how your quarantine is going. Hey, I figured out how to spell quarantine all by myself. I'm proud of myself. Let me know how your quarantine is going. And hit me with some editing tips. Let's get this conversation going. Perfect. Now people know what to expect. Cool. So we are still chilling. We are waiting for things to kick off. We are waiting for the official start time, which is in another three minutes. Until then, let's press some buttons. I'm going to go full screen. Ooh, how about that? Huh? That's fancy. Bet you didn't know I could do that. Check it out. Not full screen. Full screen. Easy as that. We can add some cut transitions. How about a fade? What happens? Oh, that's fancy. Look at that. Huh? What do you think of that? Oh, that's pretty cool. I think we're keeping the fade. I like the fade. I think that's uh, doing wonders for the quality of the stream. I think it's very fancy. I'm ready to show it off to the world. We just need the world to show up. So we still got about two more minutes, two and a half more minutes before we're going. If you are watching the stream, remember to join the comment section. If you are watching this after the stream, remember to join the stream. We try to stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 3 o'clock. If that is unfortunate timing for you, I apologize. Let me know in the comments down there, and I will try to fix it. But for now, this is the standard that I'm trying to set. Let me take a look at the audio and see how we're doing. Audio looks pretty good. We might be a little bit loud, so I'll fix that. How does this sound? Does this sound a little bit better? Maybe. We'll never know because nobody is dropping comments in the chat. <laughs> Either way, I think we are ready to get going. I think this is going to be a quick one. Today feels like a Friday, so I'm going to treat, as, treat it as such. Let's keep the ball rolling. Here are the photos we have. We have this one, which is of a jump with Mr. Andersbacke up at the ski resort called Vierli. They have pretty good park that they open up very early in the season. This was rather early in the season. This was December. We have two shots from this angle that I'm going to blend together. Hopefully it's tricky. I've done it before, but let's see if we can do it again. We're going to put this one together with the previous one, this one, and we'll add kind of a double exposure effect that I think looks pretty cool. We'll see how that looks. This was without a flash. The first one was with a flash. All I did was turn the flash off and I think it is going to look pretty cool in the end. We have this one, which was shot with two flashes, one from the back left and one from the front right to light them up perfectly. And then we have this one. Also shot with two flashes. This one was composited before the stream started because I don't want to waste too much time getting composites perfect. Once again, if you're new to the stream, our motto here is never let perfection get in the way of good enough. This is one of those cases. So let us get started with some editing here on the first one. I think first thing is first, we should try to save some of these shadows. It's a very dark photo. We won't get into color correction until we create the composite between this and this. So let's start off by saving some of the dark spots in the photo, of which there are a lot. We're going to go straight to the exposure because I think we can have kind of a general exposure uplift that I think will work pretty well. We'll save some of the shadows. That adds quite a lot of grain. It looks like grain. It was snowing when I shot this photo. 
So hopefully it doesn't look too grainy that it's unusable, but I think that's a good start. I don't know if I want to play too much with the contrast this early on because that's going to bring a little bit too much of those shadows back in. I think I want to do all that after I fixed the exposures. For example, this I want to save. It's a little bit too bright. I think it's a little too obvious. So what we're going to do here is that and that and that, and we're going to brush it back. I'm just going to brush this back, try to bring some of those details back in. I think this looks much better than just a white personality-less blob. Now we have a little bit more character in this part of the photo. Let's drop some of these highlights again and just see what we've got going on. Maybe we're okay right there. You know what? I think we are. I think I'm not opposed to that. I think that looks okay. You can still tell where the flash is coming from. There's not much we can do to hide that unless we want to spend a couple of hours getting rid of all this, in which case it is possible. But it's not going to happen right now because I am lazy. I think we're looking pretty good. One thing I want to do is I want to get in here with a brush and brush them a bit brighter to bring back some of those details because I think he's a little bit too dark and there's not quite enough detail. Ideally, I would have had a couple flashes one pointed more at the other side of him to fill in those shadows. But uh, on this shoot, this was not financed. This was more for fun to try to learn, to try to do some new techniques, which is what we're all about here. Turns out I brushed in a little bit too much of the stuff around him. So it looks like he's glowing. Let's get rid of that. You just click this erase button. You leave the mask on. So hopefully it's smart enough to know where to stop. We'll be a little bit careful just in case. Why not? That seems like a pretty good place to be. I'm okay with this. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome to the stream. This is the photo we are starting with today. It is heavy on the action. It is dark. It is strongly lit with one flash. No, two flashes. Sorry. I have a frog in my throat. Let me see if I can get rid of that. All right. So it's lit with two flashes. One of them is coming from underneath a jump to light up the skier. His name is Andres Baca. And the other one is coming from the right. And it's lighting up the jump itself. Giving some shadows there. Giving a little bit more detail, a little bit more interest. And I think it's just sort of lightening up the page, the screen, whatever you want to call it. Now, it is a little bit grainy. I don't think I want to fix it until I composite it with this other photo. Or you know what? Maybe I will. Because the other photo is all already pretty smooth. So let's see what we can do about this grain. Let's just raise this luminance and the noise reduction a little bit. And let's go there. And let's look at before and after. Okay. So before and after looks okay. That's a good start. How are we doing, everybody? Welcome to the stream once again. If you are not in the stream and you're watching this after the fact, streams start at 3 o'clock Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays. If that is an inconvenient time, let me know. Those of you who are in the stream, thank you for coming out. I appreciate you either ignoring your work or not working and spending time with me anyway. So this is a good spot to start. Let's maybe bring back some of the highlights on his skis. I think they're a little bit overexposed. Let's see what we can do about that. We'll just brush them back in. And we're going to get a stronger red because of that. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Let's just keep brushing a little bit more. We'll go down here to the bottom parts of the skis. It's a good place to be. Okay, I'm okay with that. I'm pretty good with that. So let's do the composite now. Let's command E. We'll bring this into Photoshop. We will composite it with this photo that we have here. One thing I want to do straight away is add a lot of detail into this photo by adding some contrast and some definition because all we really want from this photo is this little stream right here. Just this. First of all, let's bring Photoshop into the screen. It opened up into the other screen for some reason. That's not where we wanted it. We'll make that full size. We'll go back to here. So let's see if we can make that a little bit more obvious. Let's bump the contrast. Lower the blacks because we are going to screen blend it. And when you screen blend, the blacks end up getting lost, which is perfect. That's what we want. 
A little bit of definition. We're doing okay. Let's try to even the exposure. It's a bit brighter over here. So let's try to brush in the other side of it by raising some of these. That's a good start. We don't want to do too much because it already is so bright over here. We just want to even it out a little bit. And I think that last click was maybe a little bit too much. Let's bring it down to here, all the way to the bottom of the jump. So let's see what we can do about bringing that out a little bit stronger. The whites are helping us quite a bit. The highlights helping us a little bit. We'll be a little bit cautious with that. Why not? Contrast, I think uh, we drop a little bit. And then I think that's pretty good. Maybe, if anything, I would darken these spots a little bit. So let's see if we can add a little bit of contrast back into there. Just so we have smooth gradient from the light side of the photo here to the dark side of the photo here. We're just adding some of the contrast back here in the middle to smoothen out that gradient. This is all going to make a little bit sense when I get them both into Photoshop later. You will see. I will see, hopefully. You never know. This could be a disaster. It has worked for me once before, so let's see if we can recreate some magic. That might be a little bit too much. Let's just go with this. Let's add a gradient here to try to get rid of some of the brightness in this side of the photo. A little bit of contrast. Drop the blacks a little bit. Let's pull it in a little bit further. And that will level everything out quite a bit. So now we hit Command E and we're going to bring this into Photoshop as well. I think this is a pretty good place to start. We're going to composite this with the other photo that we have. Why does it keep sending Photoshop down there? You guys don't want to see my background. I don't want to see my background. <laughs> so step one, we are going to select everything and we're going to copy it and we're going to bring it over and add it as a layer to this one. So now we have to line it up. Now it has to make sense in terms of the story. He is starting from the jump here and he is landing on the jump here. Now, if we turn this off, you see the focal lengths were different. They were shot on the same lens. It's a 70 to 200 millimeter from Sony 2.8, but they were shot at slightly different focal lengths. That's what we're trying to fix here. So what I recommend is to drop the opacity. So you have this overlay. Now we grab one of the corners of the photo and we just sort of bring it up. Try to make it match. I think right about there is pretty close. Doesn't need to be perfect. Just needs to match. Now the perspectives are, ID are exactly the same because it was shot from a tripod. So all we need to do is get these corners. Right now I'm looking at the corners of the jump. We need them to match up. And I think that's pretty close. So now we have everything lined up. What I recommend we try doing is screen blending. You screen blend it, a lot of the blacks disappear. And we leave some of the highlights. So before, after, no blend, and then screen blend. It makes it a little bit brighter. So what we're going to have to do is go here into the adjustments. We'll go into the levels and we'll get rid of some of the darks. It opened up on the wrong screen again. First and foremost, let's hit Alt and we'll click. So we attach the adjustments layer directly to the top layer, which is the only one we want to hit. That has the trail of this gear. And we'll just drop the blacks so they become a little bit less obvious. That's what we're going for. We want to match the blacks so they disappear in the photo. And I think we're pretty much there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to mask out the parts of the photo that are light that we don't want to show up in the final photo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my stream. We are editing some photos of the skier Anders Baca that I took in December of this year, or last year, sorry, December hasn't happened yet this year. And we are turning them into as masterful of pieces as possible. And to do that, we are blending a trail of him, a long exposure of him into a flashed photo of him in the middle of the jump. And this is before any color correction. So before you get 
angry. And before you start telling me how boring the colors are, we are going to get to that. And right now we are just going to mask out the parts of the top layer, which is the trail. And we're going to bring back with a soft brush, which we have up here at the top. So it blends a little bit better. We're just going to mask this out. We're going to hope we only leave behind the trail of him jumping because that's the only part that we want. That's the only interesting part to me. That's the only interesting part in the final part of the photo. We can zoom in a bit and just make sure we're killing it. It's looking okay right now. It's looking pretty natural. We have this line here. That's not so natural. You know what? I'm going to hit X, which is going to switch the colors here. When you hit X, white is going to bring back the details. Let's see if we can bring back some of them. Just see what it looks like. This doesn't make much of a difference, but I think it's helping a little bit. You know what? I think that might be too much. So let's hit X again. We'll go back to black and we'll just brush it out again. It's perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know how the sound levels sound. Oh my God. Stop yelling at me, Photoshop. Let me know if the sound is okay. Drop a line in the comments. I can see everything you're talking about in the chat and I will respond because I am always reading the chat. Let me know about the sound. Let me know if the music in the background is too loud, is not loud enough, is too terrible. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about it being too terrible. You're just going to have to suffer through that. I don't have any headphones. I left them on my last shoot because I'm an idiot. So I am working with what I got. I'm going to be over cautious here and I'm just going to brush out a ton of stuff that I think is kind of uh, redundant. I've lost the brush. Oh no. Come on, Photoshop. There it is. Okay, it's back. Photoshop got a little confused there. Uh, we are in red mode, which is not where we should be. I'm stumbling a little bit. We have to click the mask. Sound is okay. Music is okay. Thank you, Tor. I appreciate that. Tor, how are you doing? Thank you for dropping by the stream. I'm happy to have you. Let me know that you're safe, that everyone you know and love is safe and that COVID hasn't affected you too much. Let me know how your quarantine is going and I appreciate you spending time here with me. Anything you drop in the chat, I will respond to. You know what? There's a little spot here that we didn't touch, so I'm just going to get rid of that. If you are a little bit uncertain as to which spots you haven't and have hit, you click the at button, which is on my keyboard. I have a Norwegian keyboard and the at button is right by the enter key. You click that and it's going to darken the spots that you have taken away. So there we go. Now we know. And I think that's a pretty good start. I think that looks okay. So now we have the trail of the skier. We have the skier going through the trail. One thing we have that I am not super stoked about is the lights from the cabins behind. That is something that I think I want to get rid of. But for ease, let's combine all these layers. We'll merge them and they'll merge into one. So that is a bit of a risk in that now we cannot go back and fix the mask. We just have sort of have to hope that we did it good enough. Let's bring out the patch tool. You click J and then we'll go around this. We'll get rid of that just like that. It's gone around this. We have a pretty grainy photo, by the way, it's dark and it took a lot of work to kind of bring out some of the details in that darkness. And I think we risked a little bit of grain because of that, but you know what? Our motto here is never let perfection get in the way of good enough. So we're going to keep it that way. Ladies and gentlemen, hope you're enjoying this time. The chat is meant to be a conversation between you, me, and everyone else in the stream. So if you have any stories, drop them in the chat and I'm here to respond. Just like Tor says, been stuck a lot at home and have been editing a lot myself, but it's very helpful to see other people working so I can learn new tricks. Tor, I hope I have something new to teach you. Hopefully you have something new to teach me. If you see something a little bit strange, call it out. I am always trying to better myself in my editing. Just like you, I have a lot of photos. Oops, what the hell happened there? I have a lot of photos that I would like to re-edit. And that is kind of the whole point of this uh, stream. Is I give myself a chance to re-edit some photos. Learn some new stuff from you guys. Maybe you guys learn some new stuff from me. Or if you're not into photography, 
you just want to kill some time, have some nice background sound, this is a good way to do it. Okay. Sorry, a little hiccup there. It happens. It's been one of those days. I like that. I think that's a pretty good spot. All of the lights from the cabins in the background are gone. I'm just going to steal some water. Kill this frog that's stuck in my throat. Hopefully we can drown it out and I can talk like a normal person by the end of this. One th other thing I do want to get rid of is these cables. These cables are from the chairlift. And I'm not a huge fan of them. So we'll stick with the patch tool. We'll run it all the way up. Run it all the way back down. I know I did that very poorly. I know there are easy ways to do that. I apologize. I will practice better patch tooling here on this next one. Let's get rid of this little spot here. Oops. Just highlight that. We'll get rid of it. So one technique if you want a faster patch is if you know you're going to have a straight edge on one side is you start on that side. Do the whole bottom side. Oh, oh my God. Are you killing me? kidding me <laughs> you go all the way down and you just let go on the other side and it automatically fills it and that's going to save you just seconds and seconds are everything i know it looks a little bit smooth a little bit weird it didn't do the job perfectly but hey we're not about perfection over here we're about getting the job done and i think with this last little trick we have indeed gotten the job done so I'm pretty happy with that. That is good enough. And once again, we're not going to let perfection get in the way of good enough. There might be a not very good enough spot down here. Let's see if we can fix that. We'll go back out. That's looking pretty good. Just to clean some stuff up, let's just uh, let's play with some stuff down here. I think too many bumps is a little bit annoying. We have quite a lot of lights here on the bottom part of the jump, and I'm not so stoked about it. Pele, 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 Lundberg says, Sup, is there any place where some of the pictures from Solomon MTM Jr. are posted? Pele, this is an interesting place to ask that question. That was a photo shoot that I had, or it was an event, an awesome ski event in Sweden. That is actually where my headphones are still at. If you're wondering why I lost all my ability to hear my playback. The MTN Junior event was awesome. I was there. I was covering it. I was shooting a lot of photos. We've took tons. And Pele, thank you for making that possible. It was cool that you could join and that you killed it. Everybody was such a good skier, and I had such a good time. The photos I have sent to Solomon, who was the client for that shoot. It is not really kosher for the photographer to send the photos directly to the attendees of the event. So I apologize. I do not have an answer for you. You're going to have to contact Solomon and they will give you a better answer. I wish I could just send you all the photos myself. I got them all done very, very quickly. Actually, two days after that shoot, I contracted COVID. I had the coronavirus. I am a survivor and I am here to tell the story. Hopefully, I am immune. That would be nice because then I could go outside and lick bus seats and do all that weird stuff I used to do. Again, I don't lick bus seats. That's just a joke. <laughs> But immunity would be nice. Uh, and while I was sick, I actually edited all those photos and I got them sent to Solomon and it is up to Solomon to do whatever they want with them. So look out for Solomon's Facebook pages, maybe Solomon Freeski, I don't know. Send them an email and hopefully they'll get back to you. For now, this photo I think is looking pretty good. If you have an opportunity like this to shoot a ski, uh, ski jump and you know the people who are shaping it and you know everybody who's going to be on the shoot one thing that is worth dictating and asking is that nobody walks on the flat part of the jump because that has a lot of detail Pele it was great having you at MTN Junior as well it was super fun I had such a good time and I can't wait to come back and do it again I am so sorry that Hemp's at all was cancelled coronavirus has been tearing lives apart and is actually the reason for the stream. So I'm, you know what, slightly thankful for it. So we're at a pretty good spot. I think we're pretty good. Let's save it just in case my computer decides to crash. Always save as you go, ladies and gentlemen. That was a pretty quick save because there's not too much detail. Now, let's see if we can fix some colors. 
One thing I would do when it comes to the colors is go back here into Photoshop and play with the colors here, or go back here into Photoshop Lightroom, rather, and play with the colors and then go back into Photoshop to finalize the colors. But let's take a look at what we've done. So we have the raw photo here. This was the before. And this is the after. This is kind of a heavy photo, kind of a pain in the ass, gonna take a little bit of work, but let's see if we can get through it. Let's just keep the ball rolling. Let's play with some of the colors. We'll call, cool down this scene. I think it looks a little bit better when it's cooler. Let's add a little bit of green because I'm not such a big fan of purplish blues. I think the blue should be a little bit warmer, a little bit more green. So far, so good. That's a pretty good place to be. Let's add a little bit of definition. And you know what? The definition works so well. The clarity, rather, it used to be called definition, but the clarity works so well at bringing out the trail of the skier that I'm going to brush some clarity in around him. First and foremost, let's just close all these because we don't need those anymore. And if they're slowing down my computer at all, then they don't need to be there. Let's see if we can brush in some definition on top of the trail and bring it out a little bit more. And we can. Now the photo, I do understand. I do agree it is way too grainy, but hey, we're here to get better. We're here to practice. And I think this is a pretty fun way to do it. If I had more time, one of the things I would like to do is clean up a lot of these footprints down here at the bottom, get everything really sharp and clean and nice and smooth, but we don't have that luxury. So we're gonna stick with this. I think we're in a pretty good spot. The yellows, I'm not such a big fan of. So let's see if we can make those a little bit more brown. We'll fix that again later too. Now's the time where you just sort of play with stuff until you get it right. The blues, I think we'll leave alone for now because like the quality of the photo is not amazing. So we will take this back into Photoshop. We will edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. And let's see if we can perfect this and get this to a place where we are super happy with the photo. There's only a few more steps left for this photo, but these steps are gonna be a very dramatic difference. Now, if you've been on this stream before, you know that cold blue steel is my second favorite color that I've ever created in Photoshop. These are my best colors. We have blue, green, soft sun. I call that screen, just to remind myself that it works best with the screen blend. Cold blue steel and dope ass brown. Dope ass brown being the top notch color. That is my favorite. And I call it dope ass brown because it is dope and it kind of looks like it came from an ass. So. Let's brighten up cold blue a bit because what we're about to do is paint over the entire photo. Soft light blend it. Now we have a very cold photo before and after. Before and after. I like that color. I think that color is a little bit more dramatic. It's a little bit more fun. I think it is a little bit cooler. Cooler literally and figuratively. Now. One of the things I do want to emphasize is the warmth coming from this source of light over here. I do want that to look a little bit more dramatic. So one of the things I could do is add a radial filter mask just over top of this light. Let's go all the way out to here. And that's going to bring that back in. It's going to bring some of that lightness back. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're new to the stream, thank you very much for joining me. I'm happy you're here. We are editing a photo of my good friend, Anders Baca, who is a very, very good skier. This was shot at Vierly on a Sony A7R 3 I like the photo. It's a bit dark, and I think it's a little bit fun to play with because it's going to push us. So here on layer number two, we are going to take Dope Ass Brown, my number one color. This is my favorite. We're going to add a radial filter, a radial gradient, whatever that's called. I think it's called a radial gradient, and it is. Just want to double check. Thank you for bearing with me on that little lesson to myself. And we'll soft light blend it. And I think what that does is it adds a lot of warmth to that area of the photo. Now, it bleeds over a little bit onto the jump. But before we start to mask it out, let's see what it looks like bigger and smaller. Bigger. A little bit too harsh, maybe. A little bit too much. So let's undo that. And let's leave it there where it was. Now, let's add the mask. We'll get the brush out. And we'll mask out. That was a little bit too harsh of a brush. Make sure we're at 100% opacity. And we'll mask out this part of the jump. 
just to bring that back to blue. So the light that's on the jump makes sense. And the light that's over here makes sense on its own. And this is a pretty good place to be in. I don't know if there's that much more that I would add. I will save it for now. What we could do is add another radial filter to the light. Maybe not so big this time. That was black. It shouldn't be black. It should be brown, which it is now. Color dodge it to give it a bit more punch. I think that's a little bit too dramatic for my taste. But what do you guys think? Should I keep it? Should I get rid of it? One thing I could do is mask out the center of it. So it's not so brutal in the transition. And I'm not so offended by that. I'm not too mad at that. I think that looks pretty cool. So let's group these so we can see what it looks like before and after. Before and after. Very subtle changes, but I think they make the photo a little bit cooler overall. I think they look a little bit sharper, a little bit more playful, a little bit more fun. One thing you could do since this is overblown or blown out, this is very, very, very pure white, is turn this off, go in, select a color around the edge of it, and then just brush in that color. Just paint it back in. Maybe don't have opacity at 100%. That's a little bit brave. Just paint it back in. And then you go in circles and work your way inwards. You choose some colors that are a little bit closer so it makes more sense in terms of the blend. And just sort of go through it like this until you get something you like. I hate it. So I'm going to go back to where we were. Turn this back on. Save it like that. And we're going to go back into Lightroom once again. Lightroom is the place to be. And we're going to see what it looks like. So saving. We have three more percent. In that percent, I'm going to take a sip of water because I'm dying. Sounds like... It is finished. This is what we're left with. Pretty good. One thing I would do is maybe brighten up the jump a bit. So you get a little bit more contrast there on the jump. You don't lose so much detail. You get a brighter photo, something that's a little bit more playful. Something that's a little bit more distinct. Let's brighten up some of this stuff on the landing. Just to make the landing stand out a bit, we'll just brush in some exposure. Let's play with that a little bit. Maybe brighten up some of the whites. And I think this is going to level it out with the lights on the skier. And I think it looks pretty good. So let's recap. This was the before. This is after we did the merging of this photo. This is the photo with a flash. Then I turned off the flash and I shot a long exposure of this photo. And we put the two together. And it turned out to be this. Before any adjustments, it looked like this. It was a little bit flat. And then we did all the color correcting. We did all the contrast and the light correction. And we ended up with this. And I think that's a pretty cool photo. I am totally happy with that photo. I think it looks good. I think it's dramatic. Let me know what you think in the chat. I am responding to the chat. If you drop any messages in the chat, let me know about how your life is going under quarantine, what everything looks like in your daily world. Let's compare notes. Let's see how everybody's doing. Let's move on, more importantly, to the next photo. Not that one. We're going to go to this one. So this one is pretty cool. I feel like this one is meant to be black and white not a huge fan of black and white photos, but the last time I edited this, it is probably on my Instagram. I did it in color, and I think it'd be fun just to try something new. So let's do a black and white photo. First of all, let's get rid of some of the imperfections in the lens. Every lens has imperfections, and Lightroom has a very easy way of getting rid of them. This was shot at 16 millimeters on the Sony 16 to 35 f2.8. Very versatile lens, very fun lens. I really, really love that lens. This was shot at 6.3 because it was dark and I wanted to make sure that enough was in focus, that I wasn't risking f2.8. So I shot at 6.3 so I'd get quite a deep range of focus 
and we wouldn't have blurry snow. We wouldn't have blurry trees. We would have a very crisp, clean photo. Shot at one eight hundredth of a second because he's moving super fast and he's spraying a lot of snow. This is a bit of a desperate attempt to get a spray. This was shot in December. So there wasn't too much snow. We kind of made do. I think it looks okay. It's good enough for Instagram. So we're going to go with that. So let's get started. First thing is first, we are going to correct for the lens. The lens is a very good lens, but every lens has some imperfections. So we'll click this. It gets rid of a lot of the uh, distortion. As you can tell before, after. It also gets rid of a lot of the vignetting. Vignetting is something that I would like to have full control over, so it's nice to get rid of what was left there by the camera and just start with a blank slate. And a blank slate we have. So first things first, it's a very dark photo. Let's see if we can bump the exposure a bit and save some of the details. Let's bump the shadows a bit, save some of those. That was very easy. We went from this already to this. Now we have a lot more branches visible. We have a lot more detail in the trees. Very, very cool photo. Lots of action, lots of stuff going on. Very cool, very heavily branded with head. Head skis, cool brand. Look at his, <laughs> did you notice his face? Look at how focused he is. He knows what he's doing. He's been here before. He's the man, the myth, the legend. He's Anders Baca. He's a good skier. We're trying to make him look even better. That is our goal here. So in raising the shadows, we have saved a lot of details. In raising the exposure, we have saved a lot of details. But we have also lost a lot of details here and here. And I think it's time to save those. So if we drop the highlights, it automatically fixes the issue. Maybe drop the whites. Ah, you know what? I'm not such a huge fan of dropping the whites. Let's go right about here. Right about here. This is a good spot. If there is any more detail in the photo that I want to save, it is going to be his clothing and him. So let's brush that back in by bumping the shadows a bit, bumping the exposures. We'll get the brush and we'll just get that going. Nice, super easy, smooth motions. We leave the auto mask checked. And when you check the auto mask, it tries to make sure that you don't brush outside of where you want to brush. So right off the bat, that's a pretty good start. He looks a little bit goofy, so Let's see if we can add some definition back into him. There we go. That's a pretty good start. Speaking of definition, it'd be cool, I think, with some more definition in the snow, in the spray. So let's brush some of that back in. Let's reset these. Maybe a little bit of dehaze. Maybe bump the clarity a little bit, and let's just brush the snow. That's looking a little bit more dramatic already. Let's uh, bump the whites, just see what happens. See if we can get some more details in there. I think we're pretty cool with that. Now, one of the things I'm not such a big fan of with this photo is that you can see how bright the light is here. And you can see how bright the light is up here, but where they meet, it's a little bit dimmer. So let's see if we can balance that out quite a bit. And to do that, we're gonna use the radial filter. We're gonna go exposure. We're gonna bump that up a little bit, flatten out everything else. Let's Drop that right here with quite a bit of feather. I always use max feather because I think it looks a little bit too obvious when you don't. Let's bump the whites because the whites are what we really want to show because the snow is white, correct? Let's bump the highlights a little bit. Now, it attacked the snow a little bit, but I don't think that's so dramatic. If it is, you can go into brush. You can go into erase. You can just get in there and bring the snow back to where it was. And I think that looks a little bit better. So let's stick with that. So far, so good. Now, one of the things I said right at the beginning of this photo is that I wanted to see what it looked like in black and white. And I am still very curious to see what it looks like in black and white. So we're going to hit the magic black and white button, which is just the letter V. And there we are. We are here, black and white. Now, I know for a fact that his clothes are blue. I want some more contrast in the clothes. So what you could end up doing is dropping this, the luminance, drop the aqua and just see if that does anything. It doesn't do too much. Drop the purples because there can be a lot of purple in the color blue. Not a huge fan of that. So we'll leave that back where it was. 
Let's bring back up the brush that we put on him. Let's add some dehaze so there's a little bit more punch to his clothing because we want the eyes to focus on him a little bit better. And I think that's better. Now, the highlights on his arm seem to have gotten lost a little bit. And because of that, I think you lose a lot of the value of having him in the center of the photo. So if we want to draw more attention to him, I think the key is to bring in some more details on his arm. One thing we might have did that jeopardized that is dropping the blues. And it did. So you know what? I'm going to reset that. I'm going to admit that I was wrong there. I'm going to bring out another brush. Bump the whites. Bump the highlights because that's what we're trying to hit. We're not trying to hit too much of the darks. Let's leave the exposure a little bit right there. Let's just go over the highlights just a little bit. Now, the one thing you'll see is that it's also hitting the snow in the backdrop. That's not what we want. We will fix that here in a second. But for now, let's just bump this up and make him a little bit more obvious in the photo. Maybe add some definition. That's a good place to be. I'm not going to overdo it. I'm going to try to leave it there. I'm a little bit scared of overdoing it. So now, because we accidentally lit up the snow behind him, we click erase in the brush. And what that's going to do is it's just going to bring that back to what it looks like without the brush. And there, you got to be a little bit careful so you don't run over his shoulders and get rid of some of that. That's kind of tough work. Once again, our motto here is never let perfection get in the way of good enough. So we're going to call this good enough. I think we're in an okay space. Let's go with that. One thing we could do now is try to add some more contrast into the photo. Try to bring out the brightness in the trees and everything behind them. So let's do that a little bit more because black and white shouldn't be gray. It should be black and it should be white. This is where it gets a little bit risky. Let's go back into this radial or radial gradient because I think we only want to affect this part of the photo. I think everything else looks pretty good. And let's see if we can add some more detail back around him. Maybe a little bit too much. I think it's too dramatic. So let's just let's just hang out here. Let's call that good enough. Let's go before. This is what the photo looked like before and after. One thing I don't like is how dark the tops of the trees are. So because the sky is perfectly black, what we can do is bump the highlights. There's a lot of contrast up there. Bump the whites. Let's drop a linear gradient straight from the top. And let's bring back some of the details in the trees up there. That's looking pretty good. Pretty big dramatic difference before and after. Let's leave it there. I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's pretty good. Then there's a little bit here. This little track here. I don't think the snow should be tracked at all. So let's try to get rid of that. I think... That looks okay. That did a pretty good job. Sorry, I'm having a lot of hiccups today. Taking a lot of water to get through this one. Let's add some vignetting just to push the eyes a little bit more towards him. Get rid of the white so it doesn't affect the whites in our photo. And I think I am okay with the way this photo looks. Now, another way you could add contrast to a black and white photo, or to any photo for that matter, is to add an S curve here in the tone curve. S curve is pretty standard. You basically make the shape of an S with the curve. And when you do that, you take the highlights, which are up here, and you drag them up so you get brighter highlights. You take the shadows, which are down here in the bottom of the curve, and you drag them down. And that adds a lot more contrast. There are presets already here that you can do with but it's very easy to do yourself and you have a lot more uh, power when you do it yourself. So why not just stick with that? Now let's look at that before and after. I think it's too much. It's too dramatic. Let's just leave it there. One thing that's kind of cool, I think a lot of people play with and I think it looks pretty cool, but in my photos, I'm not such a huge fan is they take the bottom of the tone curve and they bump it up so you get these flat colors. It's pretty artsy. It's pretty cool on Instagram, I guess. And for storytelling, if that's what you're going for, I think it's pretty cool. One thing you can also do instead of pushing it straight up is push it straight in along the line. So you don't lighten the darks. 
but you do end up flattening them and you get this kind of hazy look. I think that's kind of cool. But let's get rid of it and let's keep it dark. Let's just keep it dramatic for now. I'm going to stick with this. I'm afraid we're going to overdo this photo. So I'm going to keep it pretty simple. We're going to label it three just to remind ourselves that it was a good photo and it's something we're proud of and we want to share later. And from there, we will go on to the next photo, which is also a composite. But I did the compositing beforehand. And the only thing that I composited in is the lights here on this part of the photo. The original photo, he was lit up from both sides, which is perfect, but I don't think the light hit another or enough of down here. So I put this back in. It's a very poorly done composite, and I know that, but hey, it's never let perfection get in the way of good enough. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stream. Thank you for being here. I am happy you have come to hang out on this gray Thursday. If it is not gray where you are, please brag about it in the comments, in the uh, chat. The live chat is there to be used, and I appreciate when you guys use it because feedback is what drives this whole process. And I need the feedback to keep going and to learn new things. And speaking of learning new things, let's see what we can do with this photo. This is all ready. A pretty cold photo. I think it's going to be coolest as a cold photo. So I'm going to try to maintain that quite a bit. It is already pretty heavily edited. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. So these are photos that I've already edited before. So sometimes there's a little bit of leftover editing. All I really did was save some of the shadows. Not so much. You can see before, after, before, after. There's not too much. It just sort of affects this area. So let's work with that. Let's let's go from there. If we try to make it a little bit colder now. It's a very cold photo. One thing I don't like about this photo is that the lights are all different colors. They're incandescent lights, I think, or fluorescent. I forget the name. Which means that they flicker a little bit. And depending on when you take the photo or how long of a shutter speed, you get different quality to the lights. So this one is a lot warmer than this one, as is this one. And one thing we can do is to add a radial gradient to try to balance that out. This is something that a lot of people might not think about, but it's something that if you balance it out, the photo becomes a little bit less distracting. And you do that by just sort of adding back in some of that color. Adding back in that coldness here with a radial filter. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I think I want to do a little bit to this one as well. Just to sort of round it all off. Why not? There we go. That's looking okay. That's looking okay. Okay is going to be what we're aiming for right now. Perfection is nice. But never let it get in the way of good enough. Let's play with some of the oranges. What does that hit? That hits the skis. That hits his face. Don't want to play with that too much. The blues. Just going to play with that. See what that hits. It's him. It hits the snow. It hits everything around it. You can check... The luminosity of the photo you can check some of the bright areas you can check the balance of light in the photo by going into black and white and just sort of looking at it for a second i'm okay with where it is i think this jump here might be a little bit too bright so i will brush that down a little bit so it doesn't become so distracting let's flatten out that blue again let's hit the highlights maybe not the whites the highlights the exposure let's just go over that just a little bit Maybe make it a great job, man. Love these shots. Thank you very much, Roar. Happy to hear it. Your name is awesome. I'm a big fan of the name Roar. <laughs> I love it. And let's brush some coldness back into these shadows just to sort of balance it out a bit. That was a little bit too far. Let's just go here. You know what? We'll, we'll just do the whole thing. I think that is okay. That's going to be good enough. Roar, always fun to travel in English-speaking countries. I bet it is. I bet they love your name as much as I do. Jonathan Yarden. John himself, the man, the myth, the legend. Oh, man, I just want to go out and shoot now. Yes, me too. Pop this back to a neutral color. We will raise the whites. We will raise the highlights. Pele, Sweden has yet to do shit about COVID. You know what, Pele? I have heard that this is Sweden's tactic that Sweden wants everybody to get a little bit infected because once all the young people get infected, they're the ones who can handle it. 
then we are closer to having herd immunity. I'm not so sure what to believe. I think the jury is out. I know that when I had it, it wasn't super dramatic. I was stuck on the couch for two days. Not such a bad place to be stuck, especially if you're sick. But right now, since I am healthy, it's not a great place to be stuck, and I would like to go outside again. But it was the inspiration for the stream, so I'm pretty happy being here. Let's edit. Copy with Lightroom adjustments. We press Command E. We send it into Photoshop. Ladies and gentlemen, the beach ball of death. Let's let it do its work. And here in two seconds, one, two, we will be in Photoshop. Perfect. Right on time. Thank you very much, computer. I don't know if you can hear it, but my computer's fan is struggling. Let's see if I can bring this mic in close enough that you can hear it. If that didn't work, I apologize for the lull. <laughs> I tried. We do what we can for entertainment. My computer is struggling quite a bit was the moral of that story, and I'm proud of it for making it this far. Now, one thing I want to get rid of, the moon. I think the moon is cool in some photos. Sorry if there was a lot of noise when I was adjusting that. I think the moon is cool in some photos, but in this photo, I think it's a little bit too distracting. So for this, we'll hit Command J. We'll make another layer because I don't want to fuck up the backdrop. I want to keep the backdrop clean. We'll zoom in with our patch tool. And if we are lucky enough, every car photographer knows this feeling. If you're lucky enough, the patch tool works on the first try. We will circle the whole moon. And we will just move this to a similar spot in terms of exposure. Maybe up here, maybe right here. And we will hope that Photoshop is smart enough to nail this. Fingers crossed, everybody. That's not too bad. You know what? Photoshop... It's not great. It's not, it's not great, <laughs> but it's not, it's not impossible to work with. So we're going to hit the clone stamp tool just to get this perfect, to sort of get it good enough, if you will. Clone stamp, we'll hit alt. We'll take a sample from here right next to it and we'll just brush in that sample. I think it's a little bit too obvious. So I'll drop the opacity. We'll just brush that in and try to blend it in a little bit better. We'll just go back and forth, taking some spots of the photo. You know what? This is not working very well. <laughs> hey, you win some, you lose some, right? And I think this time we might have lost. Just try to play around a little bit. Bring it back in. It's not great. It is not great. It is not beautiful. These are some things that, you know what? We can't control everything. We can try, just click around until it looks a little bit more respectful. If you have any tips for me, I'm here to learn too. Try not to put an extra pair of skis in there. That's pretty important. Let's get rid of whatever these things are. And you know what? It's not going to be perfect because of all this smoke. And I think the smoke kind of helps save some of the crimes there, helps hide the crimes. And if you're looking at this photo... For the first time, I think it is not so obvious that something was done there. You click off and on. You can tell immediately it looks like shit. But if this is your first time looking at the photo, it doesn't look terrible. So one thing we're going to get rid of is this pole because I'm not a huge fan. I think it is distracting. There's also some artifacting from when I composited the photo earlier. Didn't select a layer. That's an amateur move. Sorry about that. Let's move this up to here. We'll try to copy this. Let's go here. Highlight this thing with the patch tool. Just move it over here. That's a good place to be. We'll do this spot as well because this is pretty ugly. And you know what? That's looking a little bit better already. A little bit better. Cool. So... Deselect. We'll go back to where we were. Look at how ugly this edge is. God, I need to spend more time compositing. I need to spend much more time compositing. There's a lot more that I'd want to remove from this photo. For example, whatever this thing is here. Let's just get rid of it. Uh, let's use this spot. Whatever. Good enough. There we go. Good job, Photoshop. We're here. We're making it happen. We're live. 
Thank you, everybody, once again for joining in and watching this stream. We are killing it. We are editing some ski photos, and it is going swimmingly so far. And because I have said that, I have doomed it, and something bad is going to happen. But for now, let's stick with it. Let's do our favorite trick. Let's grab cold blue steel, which is one of our favorite colors. Let's paint the entire photo in cold blue steel. And let's soft light blend it back in. And with that, we have a much more dramatic look. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. We have a much more dramatic photo. One thing I did not notice until now, and I'm kind of embarrassed by it, is how poorly this has been done. <laughs> there are patterns everywhere. It looks like utter trash. I did not spend enough time. Let this be a lesson. Devil is in the details. I will fix that by cropping it, and I will crop it when we get back to Lightroom. But for now, we're going to hang out here a little bit more. We're going to get this photo perfect. I think there could be a little bit more direction to the lights. I may be wrong. And I am wrong. You know what? I'm not going to add any more direction to the light. Sorry, I hit myself in the face there with a the microphone. It happens. I like to move it because I'm a restless person. I apologize if it makes tons of noise every time I move it. If it is making noise, let me know. I'm going to commit, hit command save. And we're going to bring it back into Lightroom. Here we go. Four more percent. We are getting there. Let me know how the music sounds. If you want a little bit of louder music, let me give you a taste. Oh, yeah, that's terrible music. That's terrible music. But guess what? It is copyright free. And it being copyright free, I'm allowed to use it. So it is the only music that I am going to use. If you have any more suggestions for better copyright music, please send me a link. I am in desperate, desperate need. Let's hit three to remind ourselves this is a good photo. Pele says, what would you say about equipment for someone starting total pictures and editing them? Especially the computer needed for editing. Pella, Pella, Pella. I am terrible at pronouncing your name. I apologize. In terms of equipment, if you really want to get into editing, there is a lot of value in having more information in the photo. So, I suggest getting a DSLR or a mirrorless, I guess is what they're called. You know what? This is some real talk. So, I'm going to finish cropping this real quick. We'll bump out all the stuff that I was too lazy to fix in the bottom. Let's call this photo done. Let's maybe add a little bit more of... Pele, I'll come back to your question here in a second. Let's add a little bit more highlights here so you get some more focus on him. And there. That's a pretty good place to be. You know what? Let's go before. This is the before. This is where we were at. And after. We lost a moon. We lost some of the bottom, but we gained a pretty interesting, dramatic action shot. And I think it looks pretty good. Now I'm going to switch over. I'm going to make myself full screen because it's time to talk real talk about cameras and equipment and everything in between. Pele, this question is tough to answer, but if you really want to get into Photoshopping and you want to get as much detail perfect in your Photoshops as possible, I highly recommend you get... Or use a camera that one can shoot in RAW. RAW is very, very, very important when it comes to post-production. And two, has enough megapixels that you can really get into there and play with some of the smaller details of the photo. For this, I highly recommend Sony. I'm a Sony person through and through. I am sponsored by Sony. I'm an ambassador. So Sony Alpha cameras. I use a Sony A7R Mark III at the moment. Can't wait to bump it up. Can't wait to switch to something new. I'm hoping the A7 IV comes out soon. Don't ask me any questions. I don't know any more than you. <laughs> For the computer, I use a MacBook Pro. Um, I am sucked into the Apple universe, unfortunately. I am stuck here forever. It's like a black hole. I just bought a new computer. I maxed out the specs on a MacBook Pro 16-inch. So that is what I'm running off now. And currently it is running not only Photoshop, it is running Lightroom. It is running my streaming program. It is running YouTube streaming program. 
it is running Spotify. It is running about 10 different tabs in Chrome and it is killing it so far because I am getting an excellent connection in my stream and my stream health says it is very healthy. I'm very happy with the computer. Now I did have before this a computer from 2014 and I used that with some very heavy, edi heavy editing. It showed signs of breaking down, but it was good enough for the purposes that I needed it. This was before I was streaming. You wrote that you have a Nikon D750 and some great lenses, but my computer is shit. The MacBook Air 2012. Fun story. I actually won a photo competition, and in that photo competition, the prize was a MacBook Air from around the same period of time. That computer lasted maybe five years before it crapped out. So I am very impressed that you are still editing on a 2012 MacBook Air. I don't know how you're still doing it. That is very impressive. If it is good enough, I highly recommend that you stick with it until you save enough money to buy a computer that is future-proof. Here's the thing. When it comes to photography, your equipment should be future-proof. It should be good enough for what you're going to do further down the line. And if you're going to edit photos more and you're going to spend a lot more time in Photoshop and doing heavy, intensive work on your computer, it is smart to get something that's going to be handle, handling another five to six to seven years of experience. So save up the money and get something very, very, very good. Just like your lenses, you don't want to get lenses that aren't going to be compatible, compatible with a full frame camera. You want lenses that are going to be able to do it all later in the line if you want to start taking it seriously. So save up the money, spend it wisely. One very good lens or one very good computer is much more important than having a couple shitty lenses or a couple shitty computers. Jonathan says, what camera would you go for if you're on a budget? Now, here's the issue when it comes to cameras. Everybody's on a budget. It is hard to recommend a cheap camera because when it comes to a certain price level, camera quality drops off very, very heavily. You're going to get a very good camera in something like the Sony a6000 series. You're going to get a lot of quality. The Sony a6000 series, the a6500, the a6300, and even some of the... the more uh, cheap and affordable options. They kill it. They're very good. But the difference between a cropped sensor, an APS-C sensor, and a full-frame sensor is dramatic. Is absolutely dramatic. Tor says, get an A7R2. Tor, I highly recommend that as well. I use the A7R3, which has more or less the same sensor. It's massively, massively impressive. I highly recommend investing in full frame. And if, Jonathan, I know you to be a car photographer. I know you love cars. And if you're into cars, when it comes to editing, having as much detail to edit and play with as possible is key. So get something with enough megapixels that you can really get into there and start editing. Just like Tor recommend, the A7R2 is a pretty good one for that because that has 42 megapixels and that is a lot. That is exactly the same amount of megapixels that I'm editing on here. And it means I can crop out stuff like that shitty composite at the bottom. So even if you're on a budget, I highly recommend that you get a full frame camera, get a full frame camera, save up the money, invest in full frame lenses, invest in stuff that's going to be future proof because I know you guys are going to get addicted to photography and further down the line, you're going to enjoy it more and more and more, and you're going to want to do it more and more and more. Payless says, $2,000 refurbished MacBook Pro. Would that be enough? I have only ever owned one refurbished MacBook, and it really served me well. I had a MacBook Pro. I had a 15-inch, and I think it did a pretty kick-ass job. They do a very good job at refurbishing them. If you get it from Apple themselves. They don't do it here in Norway. I don't know if they do it in Sweden. I know they do it in places like the UK and the US. You can go to the secondhand store on uh, Apple's website and they do a pretty good job at refurbishing back to factory standard. I would avoid doing one that's older than 2018 now. Actually, I would highly recommend getting a new one altogether just in case the quality drop off and the performance drop off is dramatic, but I know it is expensive. I paid about 50,000 for the computer that I have now. 
and it's killing me that I paid that much, but hey, it's worth it because this is my life and this is what I base all of my income off of. So it's very important to me, but I think the refurbished ones are very good. You just have to make sure that you're getting something that is gonna stand the test of time. So I think the newer, the better. If it's around 2018, I would trust it a lot more. Other than that, I'm not entirely sure. And with that, I'm gonna bring us back into Photoshop. Did you see that fade? I worked really hard on making that fade happen. Look, let's do it again. There's me, hello. And I click here and we fade back in. That is beautiful. Wow, the million dollar stream, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> And let's take a look at our photos. Let's see how far we've come. Let's go back to this is the first one. This is flat. This is without editing. This is raw. Actually, this is after the composite. We took two photos. If you weren't here in the beginning, we took this photo, which is of Anders Baca, the skier in the air. We mixed it with this photo, which is of a long exposure of Anders Baca from the same angle. And we ended up with this before the color correction, before everything was perfect, perfect, perfected. Afterwards, we ended up with this. We got a cool action photo with some very dramatic colors, very bipolar in terms of the colors. It's very cold over here and very warm over here. I think it's dramatic. I think there's a lot of action. I think it looks very cool. Our next photo was this one, which started its life in color as this photo. And after all the editing, whoops, Sorry. And after all the editing, we took it to black and white. We got a lot more detail on the trees. We saved a lot of those shadows. And we got a little bit more of an action-focused shot. And I think it's pretty cool. It's very rare that I edit in black and white. So I'm very curious to see what you guys think. There are a lot of things I still would change about the photo, but I don't want to bore you too much with the smaller details. We'll stick with this. And for our last photo... This was the before. This is after doing some compositing and bringing some light down in here and leveling out the colors a little bit. After all is said and done, we ended up with this, which I think is a pretty cool dramatic action shot. Now, those are the three photos that I'm gonna edit for today. I will go back in, look at all these photos. Wow. We're going to photos for the stream. Let's take a look at what we've done before. Just to give you a tease as to what this stream is all about. Yesterday, we did some camping photos. We did some pretty cool stuff, some tents under stars. We did some pretty dramatic sunrises. And then the day before that, which was the first day, two days ago, we did some more action shots. This was the first day of the stream. This is the first time I ever got to try it. And I think it was super fun. This is when I got addicted. We did this snowboarding shot, this black and white snowboarding shot, this one, and we did a portrait. I think so far we have a pretty cool collection of photos. We've done four or three photos every day. And I think I'm pretty happy with the way the stream is going. Now I need all the feedback I can get so I can get better at the streaming stuff because I do want to get better and I want more people to tune in and I want this to be a more interesting stream. I'm learning things like that fade, which I think is a million dollar idea. <laughs> so drop some comments below. After the stream ends, the video will still be up and you can still comment. And I appreciate all the comments. Drop some tips, some words of wisdom in the chat. I'm happy to have you guys here. And with that, I am going to end today's stream. Thank you for keeping me company in this time of quarantine. Jonathan, love the fade. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you for being here, everybody. I will work on more transitions for the next one. More million dollar transitions. Work on some new photos. I stream Mon no, I stream Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 3 o'clock. If that is an inconvenient time, I will fix it and I will change and I will become better at this and cater to you guys. Thank you very much for being here. I believe in you guys. Go out. Keep shooting. Keep doing what you do. It's good to see you. And with that, six stream, Pele, thank you very much. Nice weather here in Stockholm, going for a mountain bike ride. Very jealous. Enjoy it enough for all the rest of us stuck here in Oslo or wherever you are in the world inside. Be safe. Don't lick any bus seats. Do what you do and be proud of it. I believe in you guys. With that, I'm going to end the stream. Thank you very much. 
see you later.